PowerShell, and let's start with the PowerShell profile. Um, since as you start using PowerShell, uh, you'll find that you'll want to create a PowerShell profile to help automate some of the things that you want to be running and certain configurations you want within your PowerShell session. Um, basically, it's a PS1 file that gets created with a certain command, and I'm sure you could just search um, YouTube for how to set up a PowerShell profile, and um, that'll walk you through it. Once you create that file, you can edit it and um, add in syntax commands. And I figured let's just go through what I was using recently, and um, I'll kind of go through why I set up mine a certain way. Nothing fancy at all, but I, I figured I liked it when I saw other sysadmins sharing their <clears throat> sharing their their profiles and sharing how they work and how they set up things. So I figured um, I'll share what I have. So I saved my profile file and I have it launched here in ISC. Yeah, I could have, I haven't installed VS Code or anything else, so we'll just have to live with ISC. Now this might be kind of small, so let me, for the video, maximize that. Let's increase this. And what I did is I broke, broke it down into regions. Now, before this video, I didn't have these regions set up. I just set this up so I could present it a little bit easier, a little bit better. Um, but, uh, so you have to ignore, you know, these little comments on regions, but, uh, Anyways, so this is the profile file that I was using previously. And the very first section I had, this was actually commented out. Um, I just uncommented it for this video. Um, but this is to add the quest commandlets. And if you don't know what the quest commandlets are, I would say don't worry about it because they're, they're sort of old now at this point. I don't know, maybe there's some new development on the quest commandlets, but basically it's a bunch of sysadmin type commandlets that actually are very helpful. And, but uh, what I ended up trying to do over time was not rely on these custom things that, that if I walk into some business or I have some server that uh, for some reason all hell broke loose, I don't have access to the quest commandlets, I still need to be able to do my job without them. So I forced myself to not use them anymore quite some time ago and just use the basic commandlets that um, that come with Microsoft OS, the Windows OS. So, uh, but anyways, this thing says, okay, every time I launch a PowerShell session, I want to add the PS snap in the quest commandlets. Um, that's not a big deal, but I, like I said, I had this commented out, but I left it in there just because I figured maybe one day I need it. I don't know. All right, this next one, I just named them script directory to, to the execution. So what that means, basically, I'm saying um, I wanted to add, so let me, let me step back. So I typically would create a Windows PowerShell folder under my user account. So, and typically it's gonna be in the OneDrive account. Um, and basically all my stuff stays there. Any, any, any scripts I write, all my testing scripts, any logs, um, anything that has to do with Windows PowerShell, I usually put in there. And I have put my profile file inside of there too, but I got lazy and I, I didn't do it the last job I worked at. So um, whatever, I just, I just have a copy of my profile and I'll just copy and paste it into a new one. Anyways, so this is basically saying um, I want to be able to run any of my scripts uh, that live in this directory uh, without having to um, basically navigate all the way to it. I'm basically telling the environment, hey, this path right here should fall should go into the variables into the executable variable. So basically it's just saying it's telling Windows Anything that's in this subdirectory here could be an executable, and it's, it's and I'm allowing it to run as an executable. So I I just pop this in there, and then what do I got next? Module path. So over time, working with PowerShell as long as I I have been, uh, I'm not saying I'm good at it, really good at it, or anything like that, but I get by and I use it as a tool, and um, over time there's certain commands that I want, I always want. I always want to be able to run them as a mod, as a, as a function within my session. I don't want to have to go to the executable path. I don't, I just want to be able to type the command and it run. 
So basically I set up a module and I put it in this modules directory that I have here. And I can show you this as time goes on too, but I create that module and within that module I have certain functions or, or you could look at it as programs, but certain functions like my, one might be, um, I have one that's created or that I named get-cd uptime. CD is just my initials and that's just to, for me to be able to say, type, start typing get-cd and then I, I'm able to tab complete through all the different functions that are within my module all from just my PowerShell session. I don't have to go to a certain path or anything. So I basically create one module file and I put multiple functions in there. There's different ways to do it, but that's just what I found works for me. And I'll show you that in another video. Um, all right, config drive. So basically I just named it. This is just to configure some um, uh, network shares or any kind of mapped drives or anything like that. So within each one of these, I liked, I don't know, I was weird. I like to have an O drive and that would reference my OneDrive. So I could always just type O colon backslash and get to that path. Um, so it's basically saying, hey, if this, if this drive doesn't exist to create a new PS drive with the letter O mapped to this, this path here. Same thing here, if the S drive, which is at the time was our shared drive at the at the last place I worked, if that wasn't mapped, to go ahead and map it. And the reason I put that in there, some people may go, well, okay, well, if it's not mapping, there must be a different problem. I understand that. Problem is I run my PowerShell as my domain administrator account. And that domain administrator account doesn't have that shared drive map, so I just manually map it. And for some reason, if it's already mapped, it's not gonna map it. And same thing here with the Z. Uh, that's just to my scripts directory because a lot of times I'm, I'm looking for a quick folder or something within there and I hate to try to navigate all the way there. So I just created a Z drive, um, mapped it to my scripts drive. Um, so that's basically the configuring the drives. What else we got? Home. So basically I create this uh, dollar sign home variable. I don't remember why I did this, honestly. I may have tried to, I may have like referenced this variable for some reason I, I don't even recall um it clearly i have i didn't probably use it so but that's just something i had in there uh set location so basically this is just saying basically uh cd to the o drive every time i launch a new powershell session that way i'm right where i need to be right where i, right I want to be right at my one drive um let's see so these were a couple more variables I created, and I don't remember why. It may have been when I was doing some testing on some certain scripts or something, but basically uh, just a script path to the scripts directory. Yeah, it's just a couple variables that map to those directories. And then VIM, when I was using them, um, but I stopped using that some time ago too. And I may have had that commented out. I don't remember, but. What else I got? Okay, aliases. Obviously, you probably know what an alias is. Basically, um, a lot of these I do not have anymore because I'm not with that company. But uh, for instance, let's see, WSUS. Um, I managed WSUS at the last place, and uh, instead of remoting to that server and running it from there, sometimes I would like to just run it from my machine for whatever reason. And um, I made sure I had it installed on my machine. And then I just created a quick little alias to it. So in PowerShell, I could just type WSUS and it would launch it. Same thing with in right here for Notepad++. Um, if I needed to open a file and I wanted it to open in Notepad++, I just type in space and then the file name or the path to the file name. But it's just quick aliases, nothing, nothing fancy there. Uh, let's see. I had some proxy stuff in here. I did have this commented out because the only reason I had... I had to put this in here was for something. It was, I think, trying to update some PowerShell stuff. It needed the proxy server for some weird reason. It was just a headache, but um, so I'd, I'll leave it in there just as a reference in case I need it in the future. And then the transcript. Uh, this I had commented out too. Um, depends what I'm doing, depends on what I'm working on. I may start a transcript every time my PowerShell launches, but um, if you want a log of that whole session, you can just pop this in your profile. And um, 
and then that would record a log every time. So um, if I do, let's see, the control M, yep, control M, and then if I zoom back out, that looks kind of big, but that's just because I added all the comments in there for the regions and stuff. But that's my profile. You could do other things in there. You could change the color of the background. You could change the color of the font. Um, you could do all kinds of stuff. But uh, this is kind of... Uh, when my profile wasn't being loaded, like like if I'm log, uh, launching PowerShell on a server, obviously I wouldn't have this profile on there. So I feel like I would miss some of this, but not not really because I know that you know for uh, MECM, I know when I go on a server, I'm not going to be trying to launch uh, MECM or SCCM, what it once was known as, but uh, but like for my normal day to day usage, this. This is what I use all the time, and, and um, I've had a lot of people ask me about my profile, and I know all the guys at work share, um, at the last job, they all shared their profiles and, and got ideas from everybody, and that's how it should be. So um, this works for me, and uh, I'm sure as time goes on, this is going to change, but for now, this is, this is what I'm using. How about you guys?